Okay, let's drop into observe mode and see who's racking up the scores right now. <laughs> Look at those arrows there. That's awesome. It's ridiculous, but awesome. Hey, I'm Matt with Schematical, and today I've got a treat for you guys. First thing we're gonna do is go over some infograph, how I added an action buffer to my neural nets, which made it so they can actually learn on the job. And second, I'm gonna go over the highlights like we normally do. And I'm gonna keep this short. So if you guys like information on neural nets and them learning to play Minecraft and other crazy experiments like that, like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'm rambling here. Let's get to it. Okay, we're gonna start off with a little bit of a refresher right now. Basically, the targeting system I did a video on a couple videos ago, we're still using, but we modified it heavily. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna take a three-dimensional grid. Imagine we had three dimensions there and just simplify it down to two dimensions. What we do there is it's, instead of feeding every single one of the block slash position combinations in as its own input neuron, we iterate through each block using a neural net and assign it a score. We also do this with every entity. From there, we take the highest scoring one and that became our target. And sorry about the paper going off. I'm still getting used to this whole thing. Now we already had the concept of multiple target slots, but what we change now is that we are creating an action buffer that should help us minimize traffic back and forth between the client and the server and give the bots a little bit more definitive actions that we can then use to back propagate and also possibly share with other bots in real time. I call it an action buffer or an output buffer. Basically, we still have the same target slot neurons that we had before, but I also added in some very specialized target slot neurons for attacking, digging, placing blocks, and using items. They get similar scores, just like the target slots did in our first example, except we take the highest scoring from that and we choose that as the action to follow. You can see here that each action has its own queue and those track the scores of all the blocks they've scanned. And so we just select the highest one from all four of those outputs to be our action. In this case, you can see the place block output was our highest scoring output. Once the org has selected the highest scoring output and decided which action is gonna do, on which target, it sends that over to the server where the bots then fulfill the order basically. They carry it out in the world and it either succeeds or it fails. When it succeeds or fails, we track that. Additionally, if they are penalized while doing an action, we track that as well. We also keep the target data and a couple other things from the state around it that we can use to learn from. Now that's just the current implementation. That actually doesn't take into account any of the information it's gathered from its actions in the world. That's just stored for now. But I wanted to design a system that allowed us to take the information it had learned, how many times an action has been carried out, was it rewarded, was it failed, was it a success, and feed that information into the neural net so they can actually learn as they perform actions. So what I did there is I created another neural net that ticks out of sync with the main default neural net and the target neural net. And that takes all the top results from those action cues that we've already set up, feeds it into the secondary neural net, along with information about those actions, if it's been previously done, has it, was it rewarded or punished? How recently was it done? All that stuff gets fed into that neural net and then pushes out a score for each one of those. And from that, we take the highest one there. That gives them a second level of cognition. It might be a little over complex, but we're gonna find out. The new action buffer stuff already simplifies so many things. I have a feeling we're gonna be able to handle it. For performance sake, I might only feed back in the top 5% or the top 10 results for each action queue. That way we're not iterating through every single action in the action queue over again, because that would take a long time. The next thing I wanna talk about is how we do our scanning. Right now we do a top-down approach, which means we start scanning 10 blocks above to the right and behind the bot and finish 10 blocks below. What I want to do is make it so that we do a middle out scan. And yes, that is a Silicon Valley reference. What that does is start with the blocks closest to the bot and allows it to analyze those first. That way, when the bot sees something interesting that's close to it or dangerous, it can stop the scan, speeding up how quickly we can scan things in its environment, allowing it to react quicker to threats coming at it. Additionally, I've thought of a way to do what I call fancy scan because I don't really have a great name for it, but we can start scanning from the middle again and allow it to choose in which direction it wants to scan. So if it already has a target selected, like an entity it wants to approach, 
or track down, it can scan in the direction of that and select the box that are air that are in the direction of it. And we could probably use that for navigation eventually. But in that final example, they are choosing the direction, not my algorithm. I already added an output that would allow them to stop scanning. That's actually in the code base. Basically that fires off whenever the neural net decides it's found the block that it wants or it's just done scanning. This of course will result in plenty of neural nets that aren't scanning too far because they're doing this too early, but eventually they will learn. They always seem to. That made the brain hurt, but it seemed to work. So let's get to the highlights. This is exciting for me. Okay, let's kill all these stupid bows here. Okay, let's drop into observe mode and see who's racking up the scores right now. <laughs> Look at those arrows there. That's awesome. It's ridiculous, but awesome. They're just shooting arrows at a block right now, which is, that's, that's all I have the fitness function set up to do. Hey, I'm proud of this, okay? I made this work in about half an hour. Uh, I was just sprinting to get the arrows to be able to shoot. So the fact that it, I haven't got it rewarding for a proper target yet, still I'm pretty happy about. Just sitting there to loading that thing up with arrows. Can bots use arrows? <laughs> Yes, they shoot an inanimate block. So the next thing I probably ought to do is add uh, some type of bonus for if the arrow actually hits something of worth. Whoa, what's that? You guys see that guy shoot arrows off this way? They're targeting and shooting blocks. So the next, yeah, the next step is to reward them for shooting chickens instead of just melee attacking chickens. So these guys are Gen 11s, which means that they're they were already trained. I only deleted the fitness function for um, hitting chickens just a moment ago. What is this guy shooting? Is he shooting at the chicken? We might actually have one shooting at a chicken right now. Use item action. He's actually shooting arrows at the chicken. All right, well, we've got one that's actually hunting with a bow. Did he just shoot them? He just shot him too. I think he shot him. Yeah, he shot one after he's dead, so that might have been, he missed the second guy. Everybody's shooting chickens, right? Just shooting wood. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, my gosh. They are dropping items faster than normal right now. They're very efficiently killing these chicken right now. He's trying to use that on air, which is silly. But this guy's shooting a piece of stone. You guys want to see their neural nuts? Look at how simple they are right now. Look at the elegance in that. Simplicity. So simple. Take that. <laughs> okay, there goes your zombies. Somebody else must have just killed a chicken too because it's more than one zombie. Gotcha, sniped you. All right, so we got zombies in here. And they are indeed attacking the bots. And the bots are all staring at the floor. Now, what's interesting is why are these guys all staring at that same target? Is there an entity underneath here, something different? It's interesting. I wonder if they're trying to shoot an arrow at it, but they're too close. Yeah, they're all, so these guys all try and do the use item action and they're on void air. So I'm wondering if they're standing too close to it. We got no action here, bow used. So he's actually, he's, okay, he's shooting wood. That's gotta be what he's doing. He's targeted the wood and he's shooting it. That, did I just see one shoot like straight up in the air? I mean, they can select air blocks to shoot. Yeah, this is really not the most diverse behavior stuff because I just crafted this reward system. It's cool to see that guy walking though. Like he walked closer for some reason. I think he might have felt he didn't have a clear shot at it. It's like when they adjust, so I, th I wonder if it's when they adjust their their head like that, it's because they think that they, they're the the arrows that they've shot have, are now blocking the path to it and slightly, they don't really know. And it looks down. That or something just bumped into it and I didn't realize it. It's hordes of zombies killing people. I did just watch the season nine finale of Walking Dead. Pretty much goes like this. Just one guy in this huddle just chilling, shooting arrows over that direction. 
All right, thanks for sticking around. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, special thanks to those of you guys that are Patreons. You guys really helping out right now. I don't know if I mentioned this in the live stream, but some of my contracting hours got cut back, so every little bit helps right now. Also, if you're out there and you wanna help out in other ways, like, share, subscribe, smash that something button, insert Ron Swanson clip, <laughs> and that's it. Have a great week. A lot of fun stuff coming up in the future. Discovery mode, that's next. And I want to add... <laughs> and I want to throw in Trident at me again. Throw in some shade.